Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson of the Rhino course. I am Professor Piyush here. So today in this video, I will be, you know, demonstrating you certain commands and tools, something new, something old, which we have covered in the previous videos also. And we, I will try to connect some new commands with that so that you can have a parallel practice. In previous videos, we did a chair, we do, did some uh, buildings. You can go through the videos. The whole playlist is shared in the video description. You can, you know, go through them and start practicing. All videos are made from the scratch. All study materials and practice materials are already as given in that video description. You can straight away follow the steps in the video and practice parallelly with me. Here also, a similar way, in this video also, I will do the same. I will be demonstrating you from the scratch, step by step, how to create a lamp like this, right? And we will be covering certain commands, which maybe we haven't done in the previous video, like, you know, creating pipes like this and uh, certain new tips and tricks. So, as you have seen in the previous, one of my previous videos where I have shown how to model a screwdriver using certain reference images. In the same way, uh, this also I will be, you know, taking help of the images, you can see here, and uh, aligning them to the origin, scaling them and creating a base and then tracing it so that I can create this kind of form. Okay, so, and these images also you can download from the video description easily and can practice from the scratch. So, let's begin. I will off all these layers for now and I will start fresh so that you can also follow me up, right? Let me go to perspective, okay. So, if you press F7, the grid will be on, right? If you press F7 again, the grid will go off. So, this is a shortcut to, you know, bring the grid and take out the grid. So, this is our origin point. You are very much aware of that. If you are uh, coming here and seeing this video, following up my previous videos, you must be very much clear how this origin becomes so helpful when modeling. You will experience the same thing in this modeling also, how origin can be helpful. So, first thing first, uh, if you have downloaded the images from the description, you can start putting them in. As I told before also, the let's say you are bringing any top view or the front view or the side view, you need to go into that viewport, then only you should do it. So, like if I want to import the plan first, so I have to be in the top view and then I will bring my images. We have covered that before also to import any picture frame or image here in Rhino and put it uh, there. You have to go to surface creation tool set. You can see uh, there is a small icon of a picture plane here or you can just directly type picture frame. It will open the images. This is the previous model which we did. You, ca you can find that video in the playlist and we mo modeled this also from the scratch without using any reference images. And we covered some uh, wonderful tools in this like cage editing and creating seats. So go through it. This is also interesting uh, exercise. Let me go back to our images. So as I am in the top view, I will import my top view first. So I will click this image and double click, right? And then it will ask me first corner of picture. So as I said, try to start put everything from the origin. So here also I will do the same. Type zero, left click, and for now you can scale it to any dimension. Doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, the dimensions are given, and we will be you know scaling this image based on those. Like here you can see the diameter is given as thirty point three five. So, first we need to set this image to the origin as I said before. So, I will select the image and I will type move to activate the move command. You can find it in the transform also here, transform tool set, move, right. So, when my move command is on, it will ask me to give the point. So, I will be using this a guideline center point here and then I will type 0 so that automatically it moves to the origin. Hit the space bar and it will go there, right? So my uh, the top view of my lamp is set to the origin, the center of this. When you have multiple images and you want to see through all the images, so the best way is you need to add some transparency in this. For that, you select the image and go to your properties. Under properties, you find the material thing, right? The material uh, button and downside there is a transparency option from where you can you know, decrease and increase the transparency. Let's say I will keep it to 40, 45 or something like likewise. So, this is done. Our top view is done. I will right click to bring it to the front to all my viewports. You can see. Next is to bring the front view, right? How the front of this lamp will look. So, for that, I will go to the front view board and follow the same step. Picture frame. And this is my front view. You will also find these images and double click it, do the same, zero, space bar, just randomly 
stretch the image and then you need to scale it right so for that the dimensions are given this is 116.81 centimeter you can set your dimensions as you like it has nothing to do with industry standards now we are just understanding this so to get that there is a scaling tool very uh, reference scaling we will do that we have covered that in previous exercise also so let me make a line first as a reference line so i will use line command li space bar or you can get it from here also line command right and then i will zoom into the bottom as in the top view i have made you know the, the center like this so here also i will make this as a center line just take the reference of your cross here um, if, if you don't have a cross here you can go to tools options and uh, you can go to appearance and under appearance you will find a checkbox of crosshair downside here just check that box and the crosshair will come right so again i have to take the command line command li space bar go to the bottom try to align your crosshair like this just to get a good guideline okay click here now you know the distance is 116.81 so i will just type that 116.81 you can see it has automatically snapped to that distance Okay, the image was not scaled before that's why now you hold the shift and press left click so this is the actual scale dimension if you want if you want to see the dimensions or measure it so you can go here uh, analysis tab this is a good tab where you can you know just analyze and check your model again and again with different aspects like you know directions and all we will cover this in different exercises currently i want to see what is the distance so i can click here measure distance and then first point of dis distance it will ask so i will give this bottom as the first point and the second point will be the top of this and then if you go in the command line you can see it is giving the distance of 116.8 right so uh, you can use this to recheck if you're not sure somehow now now is the time to scale this so for that i will use a scale 2d command right as we are scaling it in both red and green axis it's an image if it would have been solid i would have used scale 3d command let's see how 2d works so i will click this now it will ask me to select the object i want to scale this image and then right click and then it will ask me the base point so my base point will start from the bottom of this lamp with the line right i will give this as my base point then it will ask me the reference point you know or the reference scaling which i am using so i want to scale from this point the top of my lamp to my actual now it will ask me the second reference point so i will give me the give uh, the actual uh, dimension this point now you can see the height of my lamp has matched with the real scale again we will do the same as we did for the top view i will give some transparency to it so select the image properties tab material section and transparency now you see this bottom i don't want it this is my origin here where green and red axis are meeting i want this to be aligned to this right is going it is not at the origin i need to match it with the plan uh, which we imported earlier so for that again i will select this image and the line right and then do the same move command m o v e give it the end point this is the end point of my line and uh, when it asks for the you know the point where you want to move just type zero in spacebar you can see my this image is also aligned to the origin so if you go to the perspective you can see it is perfectly aligned with the center of this now one more thing we missed we didn't scale the plan right so let's go to the top view and uh, do the same we need to match it with the diameter of this right so what i will do i will create i will use this as a center as it is already aligned with the origin so i just have to go to the circle command here right and take my first option which is center with radius the center point so i will take this it will ask me to give the center so my center is zero origin space bar and now you can start making your circle you don't have to match with the image now because we are going to scale it you just type the actual dimension which is written here that, that is 30.35 space bar and this is your scale circle or the real dimension circle now your image needs to match with this circle that's what we, we are going to do so for that already my image is aligned to the origin i will just use scale 2d command again as scale 2d right 
you can find it here in the sidebar this one this option where you can get scale 3d scale 2d 1d and all other different scaling techniques we will cover them slowly as the course progresses you need to scale it from the origin again type 0 to give the base point and then scale factor you know as we did before i need to scale it from this quadrant give it anywhere outside also like this and then you can stretch your image and then try to touch the circle it is snapping the center so what i will do i will off i will go to my snap settings at downside and i will off the center so that it does, doesn't disturb me there and then i will match with the scale the real circle right so this top view is also scaled now you can see in the perspective right this top view is actually showing the lampshade at the top so you can see it is almost matching with this it doesn't need to be too much accurate and match matched likewise anyways we are going to trace and if there is certain uh, you know errors and all we can fix it there now comes the right hand side view so or the side view i will go to the right hand side tab and then we'll import my image here as well picture frame right view double click zero now you have an idea if, uh, you know as you scale these images you can just randomly uh, put it till here but yes we will still we will scale this as per the height given but before that let me give some transparency to this as well select this properties material tab transparency to let's say 49 to 50 around that right and you need to move this also to the origin so move command take the center as you did previously align it using the crosshair and type 0 to move it to the origin now you need to match it with the height right if you go to the perspective you need to check this line and then go to the right hand side view and you see this image is this lamp is still shorter right now this view is little disturbing us uh, when we are scaling so what we'll do i will select this in the perspective and i will off it for now a little bit so that i can scale my uh, you know side view first i will go to the right hand side view bring it in the front select the image scale 2d space bar type 0 so that it automatically snaps to the origin as you've already aligned it it will ask me the scaling factor or reference so this is my first reference this one and my second reference point is here at the top right now if you go to the perspective and i will open sorry i will uh, open the objects and you can see now we have got what we wanted with the help of this we will uh, create the lamp model uh, let's start with the front view this one First of all, we will make this top lamp profile. So, as you have seen before, also we, I will use control point curve, which you can find here, right? And I will start making my curve from this point onwards. Try to minimize the points so that you know you have more control on the profile, but don't make it very much complex. Right? You can go it till here. Somewhere. and if you see that there is some issues you are not able to match the profile properly you can just go back select the curve you will see these control points all around which you did you need to select those points you can adjust your uh, arc curve profile with the help of those points and you can try to match your profile with your image it doesn't need to be exactly but yes Something like this. And when you are satisfied, it's okay. You can move back. I want this one to be more closer. So I will just take this and I will bring it here. So this is fine now. Now you must have seen when I was doing uh, these things, it was giving me a selection cycle. So every time, if you don't want and to avoid that, what you can do is I will create another set of layers. These were the previous layers which you know I showed you. I will set create similar but another set of layers. So, I will make a reference image like this, right? And I will go to the perspective and put all my images in this. Add, uh, you know, you can use shift to selection, add to selection, you can use shift key. Right click here, change object layer, and you can lock this image. So once you do that, uh, this image won't be getting deleted or you won't be able to do anything in that. And even when you are drafting or tracing this over this image, it won't give you a selection site like this. So it becomes just like a blunt background. Now you saw we just created one single line here, right? 
and by using this single line we will straight away create the whole profile let me show you how so this is the section line of this particular lamp top part of the lamp i will go to the perspective just to show you in detail i will uh, use a revolve command revolve or you can type rev or you can go to okay you can go to surface creation i will expand this a little bit you you can see this is a revolve command here revolve or around the rail also you can revolve so i will just show you revolve with access currently i will use this it will ask me to select the curves so you can select multiple curves or one single curve also currently i just want to you know revolve this single curve only i will select this right click and then it will ask me to get the axis right so in the beginning what we did we created everything along the origin so it becomes easy to find the axis so i'll just type zero space bar and then it will ask me the another point right where is the end so basically i want to revolve along the that axis so instead of going, giving that in the perspective i will go to the front view and i will hold my shift key towards that axis and i will left click and my axis is set right now another set of uh, parentheses came when i right click you want to delete the input which means after revolve is done do you want to delete this curve no i want to keep it for now you want to go full circle yes or uh, these things you want to split split at the tangents no i want a full section right so these are the parentheses you can uh, edit if you want now right click again and let's go to the perspective and see what's happening you can see you can literally see the profile happening right so either you can dynamically use your mouse to get this or you can just uh, the revolution angle is 360 if you want to make it around 180 and all you can change it here or if not then you just type right click it will create the full 360 degree shade let me off the image your profile is like this nice right now let's go back and similarly again i will go to the front view and this time let's create this rod to make that rod in a faster way the best way we can take reference is from the plan so i will go to the top view right and i will bring this front first you can see this center point already which we have given last time right it's already there so i will just use it as a reference because this is this is showing let me hide this lamp which we created and it will clear for you now you can see this is the reference image and this is the rod diameter so i will bring my circle command ci or you can find your circle command from here also i will take the first one i will type zero right and i will try to match it with this diameter already the image is already scaled so i don't have to even give the di dimensions i will just use this and now if i go to the perspective you will see it is coming at the bottom from the front view you can see it's it's uh, too much down so i don't want it like this i will just select this and i will just move it a little bit in the center like this a simple and straightforward command right extrude curve which we have used before also so you can uh, just go to solid here at the top and extrude planar curve because it's a, this is a single circle on, on the same plane so we can use this and straight right or you can also find the same thing in this solid creation right under solid creation you see this is extrude planar curve closed planar curve right you can use this also but uh, i will take that one solid extrude planar curve straight and then it will ask me to select the curves so i will select my curve and then right click and you can see i can straight away, straight away extrude my curve so in the front view i will check it properly to which distance i want it to be extruded let's keep it somewhere till here just to intersect with the above profile of the lamp right and i will bring that lamp also back now you can see let me off my image reference images you have got a profile of lamp and the rod okay next we need to create the base so again front view let's zoom it bring back the reference images as we did on the top we will also do the same for the bottom profile so i will just trace this profile also using control point curve you can go a little deeper no problem anyways it is going to intersect with the rod so i will take like this hold your shift key till this end point so either you can make these edges straight 
or you can uh, just use the line command and later on use the adjustable curve command to make these things like i will show you i will instead of using control point cu curves i will use polyline or line command so i will create straight lines first starting from here like this okay another straight line just right click it will keep on bringing the previous command and uh, another straight line you can take this as a reference point use a smart track this will help in this case you see the points it got gray that means that means the smart track is active and you can use it to create the bottom line like this so here you what you can do you can just use adjustable blend curve to create the profile here you will find that in the curve section the curve tool section adjustable curve blend right select first curve and second curve you can see it's coming like this or if it's not working like this you can just use a control point curve use this end and this end and just create a profile like this right similarly you can either mirror this or you can create another one right just off my smart track for a while now later on what we will do we will refine these edges these curve edges so that we can get a smooth profile or instead of doing it in the end you can also do it here so let's say fillet curves i will use this time the radius is zero i don't want it to be zero right just me i will just check what is the distance we can have so i'll take line command and just see now oh, this distance is fine and almost this is like 0.5 right so we can use this or 0.3 also will do so let's use the fillet curves set the radius to 0.3 right you want to join yes i want i want to you know join the curves even after fillet you want to trim yes i don't want the extended curve right and yes everything is yes so i will select my first curve and second curve you can see the fillet is done similarly this curve and this curve and this curve and this curve and this curve, and this curve. so the profile is almost smoothened up now we can use it and same way as I did the top portion, I will also produce this one by using the revolve command. So let me off the images and just show you the typical example. R E V revolve, and I told you how you can get revolve from here also. Surface creation revolve. Select curves. So these are my curves. I don't want to select the circle, so I will use control. So I will select these curves and then I will take revolve. Then revolving axis is zero the end axis is along z direction so i will go to the front view and give the direction and angles and everything this is fine i will just right click again and you will see in the perspective the profile happening right so just right click for the full revolution and it will give you the base of the lab so almost we are done next step is to also uh, the curves which we did you know for creating the profiles and all you can create a separate layer for that base curve i'm just renaming it in a different name so that it doesn't overlap and to select the curve in one single shot just use this selection tool which is select curves i have put them in my shortcut in the previous video i have shown that how can we create this also uh, you can go to your uh, standard under standard you can go to the selection tool set right in which you will find one tool which is select curve so this helps in uh, selecting the curves all over the model right at an instant let me show you middle mouse button select curve you can see all the curves which i created to create this profile to create this pipe and to create the base all has been selected at once i will put them in this layer right click change object layer whenever you, you don't want the curves to disturb you can just off it like this using the layer next step i will bring back my images and now we will create these profiles handle uh, you know this uh, adjustable lampshade area and the wire so to before i start tracing i would like to you know hide all these things so that it doesn't disturb me later you can put them in layer also for now i'm just hiding it and uh, i will just off my curve layer also so that you know only image is there with me so now i will zoom in and first of all i will trace this so to trace this i will use the favorite one control point curve is very handy and i will just start my line somewhere deeper here which will intersect with the pipe later try to minimize the points 
if there are too, many, too much control points, then the problem is with the profile. You can take this a little bit. It actually increases the complexity and also file sizes and so many other things. So, and also when if you want to edit, you have too many points to tackle. You can reduce then this also if you want. This is still much number of points. Right. So this is done. Now I will go to perspective, and uh, you see the curve is where we wanted it. Now the challenge is how do I make this kind of pipe on this angle, right? If it would have been a plan just like you know straight pipe and rod, it was easy to make, but I can't extrude circle like this. So there is a also a wonderful command for these kind of situations within the circle, circle tool set. If you open it, right? These are the different circle tool sets. So there is one circle which says uh, circle around curve, right? This is the tool which we are going to use because we have a curve and I want to create a circle which is perpendicular or normal to this uh, particular curve. So this command fits right in. So I will take this, I will select my curve and you can see it will ask me to, you know, start the center. I will, you can give it at the end here or you can give it at the top, doesn't matter. Let me start with the end, right? And now you can see it is not making a flat circle, it is perpendicular to this line. No alignment required, no rotation and nothing. Straight away you get a circle which is perpendicular to this, this curve. So now either you can use your image as a reference to set the uh, you know, diameter or radius of this, right? Like you can go to the front view and zoom into this place and you can match it with the image reference, something like this, right? Or you can just give it, let's say, one centimeter. Enter, and this is your. Now you have a, you have a center of a pipe, and you have the profile of the pipe, right? But still, if I want to extrude this, just like we did for the rod, we can't do it here. So there is another way to create these kind of profile along the curves, which is known as sweep to rail, right? Sweep to rail, or again in the surface creation, you can file this tool set where uh, we found the revolve tool. Alongside with that, there is one sweep one rail and sweep two rail, right? Sweep one rail, we will because it is like you know when you have two different rails and one different uh, cross section, then we will use this sweep two rails. I will show you with uh, the use of this also. So I will take sweep one rail here, and when you select it, it will ask you to select the rail. Rail here means the curve on on which you want to you know follow through your cross section. So this is my rail, and then you don't need to do right click straight away you need to select the cross section curves so this is the cross section which i want to follow through my curve and then you right click you, you can see the directions of the vectors they are they should, they should be aligned properly and now you right click and straight away and straight away you will see you will get a profile of your pipe now when you bring back your previous profiles which you have created you can see it is beautifully aligned with this let me go to the shaded mode Yes, now you can see it better, right? Let me off the images. Cool. Now, next, let me go to the front view and zoom all viewports. Right click to do that in the zoom command. You can see pipe is properly insert in, uh, inserted inside. You, if it's not, you can ex extend this also later. And now I will open the images. Next step, I need to create this profile also. So, again, I will use control point curve to do that and bring my mouse. Somewhere here, right? So you don't need to be exactly like an image, something like this. Now only one single profile is enough. You don't need to create on both the sides because we are going to, anyways, use the sweep rail command here also. And now, if you see previously for this the top part, what we did, we revolved it right along the circle. But currently, it is in. Uh, we don't know which plane this is in, right? So here, here uh, that thing won't work properly because we have to give an axis. And I'm sure uh, in this curve, if we give access, there will be an issue. So for that, what we will do, I will just hide this. Or what I will do, I will create a circle. Same way we created a circle downside here, circle on curve. So I will again bring the circle command and use the circle around curve. Select the curve. This is the curve. And make a circle. I just need to match it with the width of the pipe. Right. Now I will again go to surface creation tool set and I will bring sweep one rail. Now you, you see this is the reverse here. You need to, this is your cross section which you need to revolve around this particular circle, right? So you need to do the reverse of that. Sweep one rail, select the circle, 
the curve which we just created this is your rail along which you want to move this as a cross section so i will select this cross section and then right click and you will see straight away you've got the lamp profile right let me zoom the selected one right click to do that nice awesome right so this part is also done you've got beautiful lamp shade both the sides the next step is to create that wire we will use the same thing as we did for this uh, this pipe here just let me on the images and just start tracing this using the control point curve start from little insight try to minimize points right almost like this now, this is done let's cross check in the perspective I will off the images and see yeah profile is good now same way we created the circle around the curve we will follow the same here uh, let me just hide this rod so that we can see it through i will take the circle around curve select the curve give it the end point and now to get the diameter or radius of this i will just open my reference images go to my front view and just match it out a little bit you know something like this and if you see your uh, profile is a little bit different you can just use these control points if your control points are not visible select that curve go to show object control points just left click here it will show the points select it this time instead of using these red and blue arrows sorry red and green arrows you can just use this box and try to you know match your curve profile okay this seems nice i'm okay with this so i will off my images and just you know go to the perspective and we'll try to create a wire along this curve so this tools comes in handy sweep one rail select this now this time i want this is my rail on which i want to run my circle so select the rail like the cross section right click right click and done nice right now i will bring my rod good right now you can see everything is matched with that image and we are done with the model you can see it in the render mode as well nice right joints are also good no problem now uh, i will show you in my previous model what i did i will just off this i will just hide this also then i will bring my old model to this one and then i will go show you how it came in rendered okay so what i did was if i go to my render tab you will see uh, maybe your uh, background is different from mine i will i will sh uh, show you how to bring those things and uh, you should bring your display command here if you don't have it just bring this options there is a display option here you just check that and this display tab will come here and in in that you will see my background just for a display i have made it to gradient four colors if you bring it to render settings you will see the hdri image which i have used to get a reflection on these on on these materials right so if you don't want to see it you can just use this but still you will get the reflection of the hdri with the shadows and everything right this helps in understanding the model well now how did i how did i get the material textures about that go to the render tab and go to your backdrop first in the backdrop you will see instead of using the solid color like this right and and if your display settings are different even if i change it to solid color you will see there is no change why because in my display settings the background was set like this right so if i change it to render settings so it will take the render settings which just now i you know change it to solid color now whatever changes i will do in this render settings it will be displayed here right let's say i, I want a gradient so you will see it create a gradient of white and gray right like a gradient but what i did i created a environment right so environment is like a hdri or you can have a wallpaper here also to get environment like this uh, it's already embedded in your rhino library by default you just use a new environment button you click here right and instead of taking these you just directly go to the folder icon here import from environment library it will directly take you to the render content folder environments under that you will find n number of environments by default given by rhino here i have used this one rhino interior you can and you just you need to double click let's say i want rhino sky you need to click this first to bring this and if you see the yellow thing around that particular selection it means this is the current one right like just like rhino interior you will see this is yellow now right if i make it studio you will see the things will change okay so 
this is how you can set the environment same way reflections also if you want the environment reflections here let's see if i change it to studio let's see what happens now you can see uh, i am not getting reflections on my model through the hdri right i am getting from the studio if i change the reflection to sky you will see i will get sky reflections which is also another hdri but currently i want the interior reflections to get better results and if this thing is bothering you you don't want to see the hdri you need to go to display and change it to either solid color or gradients or whatever you like instead of render settings you can use them right now how did i paste these materials these materials are also rhino default materials i didn't you know created something uh, by myself rhino library is already there and even if you are not using rhino render you are using vray or uh, some other uh, key shot and renders or some other animation maxwell render let's say you will get materials by default or some materials you have to create if they are customized but currently i will show you how i have imported the material from the rhino library and i didn't even did a single change in that let's say about this top part of the lamp you select when you select that entity you go to properties and i go to materials you will see it is saying polished or polished orchid anodized aluminum right so how did i get that material just select this rollout if you want to change this material or, or use a new material just click this instead of taking this default materials just go to the library in the library same under render content folder you will find these materials ceramic glass metal so i have used metal under metal i have used polished and under polished i have taken aluminum i have taken this one polished orchid orchid anodized aluminum sorry right and just double click it or select and open it it will apply the material to that object which you have selected by default so for for this also it is same for this pipe here the flexible one i have used black op opaque plastic using the same method for this rod here i have used polished aluminum and for this wire also it is the same right so you can also try this i will i will invite you to try this adding those materials adding the hdri also i have told you how to add hdri just go to render settings go to backdrop select 360 degree environment use the you bring in that rhino interior environment and use the same for a reflection right and and yes one more thing please keep your lighting off when you are using an hdri otherwise it will change some settings it won't give you a good result somehow so if you are using hdri use reflections of hdri lights and shadows of that only you can also add different hdris there are websites where you can download if you want some new hdris they will help you okay good guys i hope you practice with this and you learn some few more uh, commands like switch to rail switch one rail circle along curve keep practicing and uh, we'll meet again with another interesting exercise and we'll learn some new things in this and some new shortcut ways to create complex models as the course progresses see you then bye bye